Hey, it's me, TB, and I'm going to be starting reading Rune and Rising by Lee Bardugo. Um, I did a reading vlog for uh, book two, and in book two, I kind of like recap my thoughts on book one. So you should probably watch, watch those vlogs first, or that vlog first, um, because I didn't do one, do, didn't do one first most shot on bone because I was at, a, at an airport when I read it. But yeah, um, just because my thoughts are very easy to summarize, but I don't want to talk about them in that video. In this video, just just go watch that one. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about by like the ten the ten minute mark. So yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. So I went ahead and just read the introduction, prologue, whatever it's called in this book. And I feel like it's really obvious now that um, the boy and the girl are obviously Mount Alina, which I, I had a feeling they were, but you never know. I only surprised some like, weird plot twist, like oh, it's not really them, it's some like story allusion to someone else or whatever both like the prince of the air or and the cursed one and the especially zoya david and i, I don't remember her name but i, I like her as a character jimma jenna uh god i hope i don't know her name because I, like, I like her as a character I, I just can't remember her fucking name to save my life she wasn't in like book two that much so i just kind of forgot her name i was that mal is in chain somewhere and i'm kind of okay with that because it is exactly what he what he deserves and Alina is off dying because she doesn't have her magic anymore, which it's kind of what she deserves too for being really stupid and like wanting to run away with Mal instead of like fighting the Darkling. Or like hell, just pretend to agree with him, like go with him until he's alone, and then kill him when you're like alone with him. But that kind of that's too hard for her. And like the prologue ended with her being like, "They don't know that we're thieves and we can like do cool phantom stuff or whatever." And I was like, "You've never been a skillful thief." And like, like, he was trained to be, like, all sneaky when you were kids at, like, some dude, rich dude, rich guy's house. But he was, like, old. You know, had, like, a one nanny. So I don't think your, like, stealth skills are necessarily up to par. But since we've never seen them in action over the course of, like, the last 700-ish pages. Like, we've never seen y'all be stealthy, stealthy at all. Mal dies in, like, one hit. So I guess he's, so I guess he's kind of like a thief. If you think about it in, like, RPG terms, maybe he's, like, if he fought like that, maybe. But otherwise, like, yeah, you guys aren't thieves. Um... Y'all can't be stealthy to save your lives. Y'all couldn't even, like, detect that someone broke into your kingdom, like, the darkness broke into your kingdom to, like, with his shadow army until, like, you're all dying. So, y'all, you know, maybe y'all aren't, like, the best aware in the world. I wouldn't call yourselves thieves at all either because apparently, like, y'all can't do nothing. Apparently, she's, like, chained to some basement. So, I was like, I get you're a thief and you're all and be all sneaky and shit. But, like, what's your reasoning about how you're going to get out of a jail cell with no powers? Even if you do have your powers back, you can be a nightlight. And that's about it. So don't know what her big ambitious goal is to get out of that. I do have a problem with how the book portrays like the rest of the cast, like the rem remnants, remnants of the second army, how they're not useful. But like, okay, compared to like, who else is here? Who else is a fucking creature here besides Tulsa and Tamar? You're all just soldiers, and soldiers aren't, aren't going to do be fucking useless against a fucking shadow demon army. That that like that can't be hurt besides the cut. So I don't know which which you guys are talking about, but you're all fucking useless already. I'd be giving the fucking second army a little bit more respect because they're, most, they're gonna be the most useful people in this whole fucking team so i would just be a little bit nicer and just in general like i just hate the way book two ended so much i hated it i if i if i didn't wasn't used for like a group chat read along thing i wouldn't be enough it i wouldn't be enough the series at that point because the ending was so fucking bad and then not like urzenrod in this in the prologue so hell maybe he's some like secret amplifier thing too and he's gonna be given to like mouse so he's not, not not as useless who knows i don't fucking know anymore probably but we know that this bird is going to play into effect some way because the last group had a stag and a sea serpent in them. So probably this bird is going to be important too. Will it actually put up a fight? Or is it going to be like a fucking serpent and die in like two hits? An ancient 1,000 year old being, but it dies in two hits. Sure. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, I'm probably going to read this in like five chapter chunks maybe or something. Because I feel like that's easier to vlog than just like reading a certain page account or something. I don't know. Um, next thing you see me will probably be in my car in the morning. When I, when I update you on Percy Jackson or like do my follow ups to that because I just read that. It shows like when these are filmed, but hey, you don't need to know like specific dates. So um, I will catch up to you when I read from this, I guess. Hey, I'm here to give my thoughts on Ruin and, Ruin and Rising. I'm on page like 130, 120, 21, something like that. I'm on the start of a chapter, so it's somewhere around there. So far, it's better than Siege and Storm and Shadow and Bone. Which is weird because everyone says the third book is the worst book, but so far it's fucking better than the other two. I like, actually see Alina, like, become brave one and actually, like, do something for once. Because usually the last, like, two books she's been very, like, 
acted upon and not making her, making, making her own choices. So it's nice seeing her like actually become kind of like, I don't know, like strong-willed. I don't know what the fuck the word is. I was going to say bitchy, but, but that's probably not, not the right word. But sure, like she's being bitchy in like a very positive way. Like she's not taking shit from that apparat or whatever his name is. So I'm already there for all, there for all that. Problem lies in the fact that we're trusting Tulsa and Tamar again. Like sure they saved us, but also but they're also part of a cult. And I don't know how I feel about trusting people people that are part of a cult, especially when they're like their leader like try to pretty much trap your friends in my cave and like threaten them all with like killing them multiple times. So I wouldn't trust them at all. But okay, whatever. Main issue is how. Mal is like becoming useful for once but all of his like scenes are immediately shut upon by the fact that they're all like some tracking trick like he blew open the ground to like a path to the sky so she could like get sunlight and become strong again which that plot line was, as a whole was resolved, was resolved very very quickly but whatever and he said that he was like tracking a beetle in the bag that someone threw and I was like okay I don't think that's how tracking works but what do I know and then when the, he was like ringing in through the caves, he was like, I found our find our way out by tracking birds outside or whatever. And I was like, I don't think that's how tracking works. He can't just like, like, I think that's basically just confirmed that his tracking is like some magic he uses. I've I, I ne I never hunted, so I don't know for sure. I don't think tracking works by you just like feeling something and then just following it. Like, I don't think that's how tracking works. Because like the way it's, it's shown to be used, like he can like sense a living thing's like life force and then find it or like find where it's located at which is cool but that's not what tracking is <laughs> it's magic but okay what, what do i know and then back to like alina's powers being gone then you're all of a sudden, all of a sudden back that was all very quickly and i would have liked to see her like not immediately get them back and just kind of like have to work for them or like i don't know like wait longer like the fucking climax could be her getting her powers back or whatever. like maybe like her seeing a firebird and like the fire the firebird reignites her powers or whatever like yeah it would have been pretty cool but no she just gets them back because the sunlight and apparently she wasn't near the sun so her powers were gone Which, okay following that logic that she's powered by the sun and she's light and the darkling is powered by darkness so therefore he must be, con be must be connected to like the moon or moons so in theory just bring the darkling down to a cave and he would lose all, all his powers too because that would have made the most sense if you're like connected to like the if she's connected to the sun then that means he has to be connected to like some other planetary force too. So probably the moon. I don't know. Or like vice versa. If he's if she's gets depowered by being deep in the earth, take him to like the top of a mountain and he should be like lose all his power because he's further away from the ground. So like, you know, if they're like they're opposites, then like what depowers her should should strengthen him and what strengthens her should should depower him. So just bring him really high in the mountains and he'll be he'll be like he'll be help, helpless. So just do that. Like I don't I don't get it. Still wondering, they got captured by his army, and I think they're about to escape. I don't remember where I stopped at. They're either, like, being held hostage somewhere, or, like, in the process of escaping. I don't remember, I don't remember specifics. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. It's better this far, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I just, I just don't trust that Mal's gonna remain this good, or that Alina's gonna get this much depth. And okay, and actually, actually, not, actually not done. What's up, like, these random-ass creatures that we've never really fucking met, met before being plot-relevant all of a sudden? Like, there's Stiggs, that crazy guy with the cat, who gets called crazy. I'm like, why do I bring him with, with y'all then? He's fucking crazy. And there's Maxim, who's like a healer that they, that they didn't bring with him. Which I was like, y'all need a healer. Why did y'all bring a healer with y'all? Y'all going out into the fucking caves? I'm fine with, like, Marie and her brother, Atrid, Atrix, a Astrid, whatever his name is. He's cool. I don't mind him. I don't mind uh, Siegfried. Is that his fucking name? I don't know his name. The guy whose girlfriend got, like, sliced in half. Her. Or him, I mean. Yeah, him. I don't mind him. He, he makes sense to be there. But they're, like, these three guys, like, Maxim, Stig, and Hawkins, Hawthorne, Harville. I don't know. Um, whoever he is, um, like, those three, they don't make sense. Because, like, the way Book 2 ends, it sounds like they're going into the caves alone. Like, just people that we know about. And I just find it interesting, like, none, none of the three that were newly introduced are, like, not white. They're all presumably white because they're not described as being anything else. One of them is described as being very blonde. That's about it. Um, there might, there might be another girl, I'm not sure, but I don't remember all the names. And it's just, like, yeah, see, you had the chance to make one of them not white, and yet somehow they're all white still. Questionable, but since, like, the only, like, non-white people were all killed at the end of Siege, Siege and Storm, so extra questionable. I know that Alina was, like, retconned to be, like, partially Shuhan, 
But come on, that's shit. It's not what James Jean intended. Just obviously that is a retcon. That was just made to make, make, make the books look, look more diverse. Because, I mean, let's be honest. Mao is 100% a fucking Republican. He would not be friends with a fucking Shuhan girl. We all know it. I should admit it. He is racist as shit. And we just, we just don't know it yet. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. I'm pretty sure the people we just got int introduced to this book are going to get killed off. Or I think Tilson tomorrow is going to get killed off, probably. I just don't feel like Lee Wardig is going to have the boss to kill off anyone else. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. And I'll update you when I read more. <sighs> okay, I finished Ruin and Rising. It was three stars. It was better. It was like probably the peak of the series of, of the of the trilogy thus far, but still, it wasn't incredible or great in any way, shape, or form. Mal finally did get a personality, and I did did like that. Then like the last two hundred pages, it just tried so hard to be like dark. How people would die, like in murder, like massacre, or whatever. It just didn't really work with like how the tone 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 of the story was going. So it just didn't didn't feel like it fit in the story at all. And, like, I have many thoughts to say, and I'm going to do, like, a video where, like, I like, talk about the entire series, like, a whole. I feel like a lot of stuff I have to complain about is going to affect all those and not want to make this video, like, extremely long. And so I'm just going to talk about, like, the basics. I do, like, I have issues with the way the fold was handled. Like, that could have been, like, a different way of destroying it or just have it there permanently as, like, a reminder of what happened. But no, it just evaporates when her third amplifier happens, which is fucking Mal. Which did not get the proper build up it deserved. Like all of a sudden it's just oh it's now by the way. Mm -hmm. I was like how oh, was it Mal? I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't understand how it's Mal. Like, I get like there's a few moments that she talks about it throughout the books, but still it doesn't feel like it works with the story being told. Like it just does not make sense for it to be Mal. Like I get she wanted to make it unique as the third one or whatever. But it just doesn't fucking work. Did she not? It should have been more noticeable that it was Mal from the get go or like more hints dropped towards it. But it kind of like dropped it on us all of a sudden. And I just really hate the trope that this book does. That technically the whole fucking fucking trilogy does. Like, Mal and Lena are constantly like, we want to be together, but we can't. And I'm like, but it's a fucking wife fantasy. So you're going to get together, get together no matter what. Why even kind of like act as like it's some kind of like cock tease when it's like, we know you're going to get together. There's no way you're not going to get together. So why if I waste my time? The whole like, will they will, won't they thing works in some books. Because, like, it works in paranormal romance because, you know, one of them is human, one, one, of them is, one of them is a vampire. It works because, like, some distance between them and that there is some, like, weird gap they have to, like, bridge. However, like, the whole series of, like, paranormal, paranormal romance isn't going to be exactly that same story told over and over again. Like, for instance, the, 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 the Twilight Saga. The first two books are all about Edward and Bella kind of, like, coming together and kind of, like, dealing with the whole differences between them. And it's kind of like a will, will they, won't they kind of thing. But at the end of the day, in fucking books three and four, I'm pretty sure they're still together. Like, book four, they have a fucking kid. So obviously, at least there's one book where they are together. We don't have, like, one book of them, like, fucking Mount Alina being together because you're still trying to do this whole will they, won't they, when it's like, it's fucking why a fantasy. They're gonna do it. Why are you trying to lie and make it seem like they're not? And I don't, I'm mixed now, I feel, about the whole her light power is kind of, like, dispelling and, like, giving sun powers to, to other, like, to normal people. That's like, okay, I guess. Which, okay, we still have a fucking answer to, like, where did her powers come from? Because if the Darkling is born from someone who has shadow powers, and Delina's mom had light powers, which means one of these fucking Grisha, somewhere through history, had light powers too, and you don't know about them. Which raises many questions. And I just, I don't like how, like, much, much of it was off, like, the lore or whatever. Honestly, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it, honestly. <sighs> I think Bagger's death was fucking point, was pointless. At the end of the day, it accomplished nothing. Get it switched to, like, spur Alina onwards to, like, push herself further. But it just felt useless at the end of the day because we hardly ever saw Bagger besides, like, like two scenes in this book. So I just didn't feel like we got to get enough, enough of her to make me feel lost for her. And she did play a big, big part in book one. But again, that was two books ago now. And she, Bagger wasn't even in, in book two besides, like, maybe one scene. So I just don't see, didn't have, like, that connection with her. And I hated how, like, she like how bad where was they so, so she like we were to started killing off characters but the characters were all the characters that we just got we just got to know like this book so it was harsha and ruby that died that were like named i was like two characters that we already don't fucking know anything about cool like mal should, mal should have stayed dead or he should have been killed when they first got off the fucking mountaintop because it showed like how dark it was like you want, you want it to be dark 
well then you have to make it you have to make it dark you can't just have them fall in love and be like all oh, right away in the fucking woods to live in some magical fairyland forever you know like you need some dark shit to it and there's no fucking darkness to that to this at all as a whole I would have vastly preferred it there weren't just so many like fucking massacres throughout this book like the orphanage should have been attacked the fucking um place at the top of the mountain should have been attacked like fine take us away from there do the rest of the story fine i don't, I don't care there's a lot of inter interesting that i would have rather seen rather than they got attacked and everyone died again they get attacked and everyone died again like i said that it's dark but it doesn't work with the context of the story because so much of, of like the rest of the story is all light and happy and like normal why fantasy so why are we suddenly getting all dark and spooky it doesn't fucking work <sighs> i just don't fucking get it i don't i don't get how this book oh the whole trilogy got so much praise because it just like the first two books are just bad like but one is fucking awful i don't i don't see how i got so much praise i don't mal is fucking awful <sighs> mal got personality in this book so that, that that's nice it took fucking two books close to a thousand pages before he got any fucking development at the end of the day all his feats were still a tracker shit and like i get and i like that he kind of explain like why he found the stag and the serpent so fast because like he he an amplifier the amplifier they're gonna be attracted to each other so fine, I get it. But it doesn't fucking explain his other tracking powers. Like, it's fucking magical. He, he doesn't, make sense for, doesn't make sense for him to be able to track fucking everything. He's magical. Why is he able to track fucking birds when, when he's underground? And you know, like, are they all fucking amplifiers at the end of the day? I mean, you need to know this. I like how the story ends with her losing her powers too. Like, fucking stupid. She finally fucking got, got, got control of them and she lost them anyway. So what's, what's the point? What's the fucking point? I just hated how, like... They had to pretend that she had died so she could like run away and live her little happy life. When I was like, girl, it's not gonna fucking work. I just like, you all got fucking busted by the Darkling within like a week of getting to fucking the other land on the other side of the world. And I hate how like every continent, I learned when we talked about Hershaw, but like how every continent hates Grisha besides this, this one fucking one called Ravka. Ravka is the only one that likes Grisha apparently. Everyone else fucking burns them because the Wandering Isle also kills Grisha too. So I was like, does everyone just kill Grisha? How do Grisha, like, how do Grisha have a sustainable, sustainable population? Especially given the fact that, like, so many have been killed throughout the last two books. Like, there's no way they have enough people to, like, reproduce more Grisha. They're, like, fucking breeding like rabbits. Because, like, so many have been killed. There's no way to fucking make, make enough to, like, replace all this. People. There's not. I don't get why they all, like, so many countries want to kill Grisha either. Like, no way. They're all fucking military heavy. They would want to use this in war. It doesn't make sense on, on, on like, on, like world, world building wise because, you know, they're constantly in war. You wouldn't kill people that can make fireballs when you're constantly in war. You would want to use them as weapons. Does that make a lot of sense when you think about it analytically? That's more something I should talk about in like my series overview. There's a lot of potential, but it was squandered. Am I surprised? No, because I fucking read the first two books. The first two books are basically fucking potential being squandered for like 300 pages, so I'm not surprised at all. I swear, Six of Crows better be fucking groundbreakingly incredible because that's the horror I suffered through, these, suffered, through, suffered through these three books. And, uh... Uh, yeah, I think they're my thoughts. So we have fucking carried the series because she was so witty and funny and like that. Guinea was fun. Guinea was fun for when we, when we saw her, which wasn't that much. Guinea and David and Tamar and Nadia, Nate, Nadia. They were they were both great couples, better than fucking Madalena. And I still don't believe the dark the, the darkling is evil. Sorry, I just I just don't fucking don't. He was a good guy, and he literally said, "No borders. We're all humans." He went. He was gonna gonna protect the Grisha. So I kind of support him more than I support. Fucking all the, all, the, all the other people. Sorry. 